Hey there guys, Paul here. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through some examples for the selection of an ICF valve station for your industrial refrigeration application. Coming up, selecting an ICF valve station, searching for an ICF, designing a custom ICF, generating a report, and generating a bill of materials. This video is part of a series where we'll be looking at a number of worked examples using the Cool Selector 2 application to help you select and calculate components for your refrigeration system. So do check out the other videos if you haven't already, links are in the video description below. As we are focusing on an industrial application, we'll change our preferences to show the most relevant products. To do this, simply click on options in the top menu bar and then click on preferences and then select industrial applications. We start by heading to the valves and line components section and then selecting ICF valve station. First, we need to define our system. If you change your preferences to industrial, then the system will default to a pump system to save you time. You'll see the system schematic has updated to the relevant system selection. We now need to select where in the system our ICF will be installed. For this example, we require an ICF for the liquid line. Finally, we need to select the refrigerant being used. We'll use ammonia in this example, and again, you'll see that Cool Selector 2 has defaulted to this option. If you change the refrigerant, then a pop-up will appear warning you that the product information on screen will change because the refrigerant properties have changed. So it asks you to confirm if you would like to continue with this change. Now we need to define the operating conditions for which the valve is used. In this case, we need a cooling capacity of 40 kilowatts, an evaporation temperature of negative 20 Celsius, and a condensation temperature of 30 Celsius. Below the operating conditions, we can now choose if we would like a predefined ICF valve station or if we require a custom built unit. For now, we'll leave this as predefined, but we'll also look at the customization options shortly. Coming down to the products table, above the table, we can quickly select which type of connection we require to narrow down our results. For now, I'll leave this as a DIN EN butt weld. You'll see a number of products have been shown in the table by the application. In the table, we see a number of columns with M numbers. These are the different modules that make up the ICF. Each application has an app code. The application code identifies the ICF configuration with the same function. In this case, the application is a liquid injection to separator, which has an app number of five. The products listed in the table are sorted by the expansion valve module load. Some of the listings have red text. This is warning us that there is a compatibility issue. If we scroll to the right, we can see a warning symbol in the results column. We can quickly see the issue and also the module causing it by placing our mouse over the warning symbol. If we select a product on the list, we can then see the performance details by clicking on the Show Performance of Selected ICF button, or by double clicking on the selected valve. This will refresh the window and display the valve station at its modular level, detailing the performance values for every module. ICFs are calculated as a series of components in a line, making the design process for us engineers much easier. We can export this table simply by right-clicking on the table and selecting Export to Excel. In the lower segment of the screen, we can find additional performance information. Within the Performance Curve tab, we find the interactive performance curve which shows the collective effect of modules in the valve station. These values change as we move our mouse across the chart. Within the Performance Details tab, we can find system diagrams, pressure enthalpy charts, as well as thermodynamic data for the valve station as a whole and as each individual module. We can check the details of another ICF valve station by selecting the Quick Select button to take us back to the list. If we select an ICF valve station which has red warning text, we can find more information about the issue by double clicking on the selected valve. The window will then refresh to show us the issue at modular level. Another way we can find an ICF valve station is to search for one by clicking on the search for ICF button. Here we can choose the application, the housing type, a number of modules, as well as the connection type. For this case, we need a valve station with application 05 liquid injection to separator as we saw in the previous section. Now if we select the connection type, we can see the list of all ICF valve stations with the required application code and connection type. We can limit the search by specifying each of the modules and we do that by clicking on the drop-down menu on the table header in front of each module. 
if for example we select an expansion module in module 5 to be an ICM 20A33M, the list gets updated with all options which include the specified expansion valve. And as we scroll through the list, we can find the previous configuration we saw using the quick select method. We can also customize an ICF valve station by selecting the Customize ICF radio button. We can then choose the housing type, the number of modules as well as the connection type. Alternatively, we can start from a blank valve station by first heading to the Quick Select screen. We can then select which components we require in each module. We can also customize a pre-configured valve station by copying the code number and then clicking the Paste button. If we change, for example, the filter from standard to special, we see the code number will then update because the configuration has changed. However, if we were to change the filter to an extended filter, then we see that there is no code number available. That's because the current configuration is not a pre-configured setup and you need to contact Danfoss for further information and to order the specified configuration. On the right hand side, we have an option to add this as a favorite. The application will then ask us to enter a name for this ICF. If we click OK, this will now appear on the left hand side under Favorites. There is a Manage Favorites button at the bottom where you can rename or delete these. We can generate a report for our ICF valve station by selecting the Report button in the top menu bar. A report will then generate on screen detailing our selection. On the left hand panel, we can include or remove items from the report by expanding the list under items to include in the report and then selecting or unselecting items. If you make a change here, just click the update button to apply this to the report. Additionally, we can add a project name, some comments, as well as an author name using the inputs on the left hand panel. Again, simply click the update button to apply these changes. Along the top above the report, we have a number of options to export the report. We can generate a bill of materials, which can be provided to a Danfoss supplier for a quotation by clicking on the bill of materials button in the top menu bar. The screen will load to show the bill of materials, detailing the product description, code number, and type code. Additionally, on the left hand panel, we can also add a project name, some comments, as well as our own name to the bill of materials. If you make a change here, simply click the update button to apply this to the bill of materials. Above the bill of materials, you will find various options to export the information shown. Okay, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this and it has helped you. If so, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share. If you have any questions, let us know in the comment section down below. You can also find links to more Call Selector 2 tutorials in the video description. Do check those out. Once again, thanks for watching.